So this slide simply says that, you know, when we study concepts, we have to be careful not to draw too strong a conclusions from one kind of study, because if there are these different systems representing concepts and if different kinds of tasks tap into these systems differentially, then we're, we're likely to get very different results depending on how we measure this system. So in some task conditions, we see the linguistic system active, and others we see simulation system active. And then these are just kind of three final sort of suggestions for how, think, you know, how to kind of continue studying abstract concepts. Um, we really believe that more naturalistic approaches, not just looking at these concepts as at isolated words, are essential. We, we need to understand how these concepts work in situated processing. We need to learn a lot more about their content and structure. And then we also need to understand kind of how the linguistic and simulation systems implement them. And so far, other people, and we have been pitting these systems against each other, but we actually believe that typically these systems work together and that that especially the linguistic system is central to abstract concepts. It's no accident that, is, that it has been stressed so much in previous research. We, we think that, um, you know, uh, by virtue of having a linguistic system, we're able to learn and represent and use abstract concepts much in a much more sophisticated manner than we could if we didn't have a linguistic system. So I can give you a new abstract concept you've never heard before. I can describe it in one sentence. And um, so if you've never heard of schadenfreude, um, okay, some of you have. Um, but schadenfreude is a German term referring to uh, taking pleasure at someone else's misfortune. Um, so if you didn't know that concept, I can tell you that one sentence. Instantly, you could go around the world and start picking out instances of schadenfreude. That's pretty amazing that, that we can do that. Um, and so we think that language is just absolutely central to how people learn and use these concepts. Um, and that kind of really understanding how these two systems work together to implement them is kind of what is, would be the most advantageous approach to take to studying them in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, repeat questions. Okay, yes. Yes. By your conclusion um, about the, the importance of language here, because it seemed that earlier, uh, that's why I asked you that question about uh, about part verification. It seemed as though your your view of the contribution of language was was highly limited to word association, the, right? The role that it was playing. So right. now, are you suggesting a, a different, deeper role? Yeah, I think. I mean, I really I love those sets of experiments we did with word association. I think they show some great points, but they are incredibly limited in underestimating how the linguistic system works. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't re I didn't repeat your question. So the question is, kind of, what's the rel You know, how important is language actually um, uh, to uh, to abstract concepts? Um, and I I mean, I, I think. I mean, the word association experiments really underestimate kind of, I mean, because language is so much more sophisticated than word association. It has all kinds of amazing structure to it that linguists and psycholinguists have, have documented for decades. Um, and I think, you know, to understand abstract concepts, you have to go at, at them taking that kind of structure with you. You can't just go at it with word associations. And, I, and in general, I mean, my, my feeling about the conceptual system in humans is what you know, if you can say, think, compare, I, I think what really takes our conceptual systems to a new level is the fact that we have this linguistic system coupled with the simulation system that gives us so much more control, articulation, precision over it, say, compared to other species that don't have that kind of con linguistic control system. I think other species have a similar set of simulation systems that, op that can do all sorts of kinds of, many of the same kinds of things that we talk about for simulation, but they can't do things that involve kind of like abstract concepts that require a much more powerful linguistic system. So, yeah, no, I don't mean at all to say that language or linguistic systems are important. Um, uh, I, I think the two systems work together to, to give us all the amazing conceptual abilities that we have. Yes? What about the time course of, of this, these two kinds of information processes? I mean, one of the slides you showed quickly, I think uh, it was a generating feature experiment, and th there were, um, you had images of less than seven and a half seconds or more than seven and a half seconds. So in real time, more than seven and a half seconds is, is too late, right? So what, what, what really happens in an online way when you're processing uh, in input, like, let's say, like, linguistic input? Yeah. Um... Oops, 
I always do this. Okay. Um, actually, in this experiment, so they, in this in this in this experiment, they, they get a word and they have to generate features for 15 seconds, and they're doing it to themselves in the scanner. They practice outside the scanner. We collect lists afterwards, but they're just they get like chair and they just generate features for 15 seconds, and then we just go in and divide that 15 second block into halves, seven and a half second blocks, and kind of. In the first seven and a half seconds, we get we have we have localizer tasks for word association and kind of imagining situations. And first seven and a half seconds, you get word you get Broca's area and cerebellar cerebellar activity in areas that are typically associated with word association. In the second seven and a half seconds, you get precuneus and um, a right temporal gyrus areas uh, that are probably more likely to be active in generating, say, imagery about um, situations and. And the seven and a half second thing, we, we get a lot of grief over this because it is incredibly long period of time. But I, I, what I think is amazing is we even get a result. These are really robust results. Um, and, and what it suggests is that, um, I mean, if it, if it were all over much, quick, much more quickly, it, it certainly seems reasonable. We wouldn't see these kinds of effects. If everything was happening simultaneously, if you were, you know, if you were, getting, if you were generating word associates and simulations simultaneously, you wouldn't see these differences. So there's definitely clearly a phase where they're getting stuff out of the linguistic system, and then they kind of shift into the simulation system. And that, in this behavioral study that I didn't show you, it's kind of the same thing. So in the first second, you know, the first couple of seconds, you're getting word associations, and then a, a few seconds, a couple seconds later, you start to get stuff from the simulation system. Um, now, I mean, so Friedman Pulvermuller um, is, is often fond of pointing out to me that you know, he can give people, he can present people with a word auditorily, you know, like in a MEG study, and get activation in the appropriate, for, for a, a motion word, like a hand action or a foot action, and get activation in under 200, 200 milliseconds. You know, so clearly, when you get a word, you know, and that's why we draw these things as starting together at the same point in time. Um, that you, you know, you, you're getting both of these um, kinds of information becoming active um, more quickly, but and actually, what, what we should probably, instead of calling this activity, maybe activity is the right word, but we think of this more as readout. That kind of what, what, what the, um, what's happening is that the executive system is first looking to, uh, to this source of information for its initial responses, perhaps because they're available faster. And then once it kind of, that kind of dries up, it then shifts into this um, simulation system. It, I mean, in terms of the time course, so I mean, in this experiment, you can see that the, you know, th th these are for features from the linguistic system. These are all features that have kind of some kind of linguistic property in the surface form, um, that, like they come from compounds or, or in, in th linguistic compounds and so forth, whereas these are all sorts of things that have no marker for a linguistic relation. And, you know, it's like a second or two slower. So, you know, that, that might suggest one time course. Um, but, uh, you know, I think it's probably widely variable depending on the task, the words, I, the other thing to say is that I think if, 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 we, if when we're presenting pictures, the situation would be reversed, that you would be getting kind of a, a simulation system, um, system being fa accessed faster than the linguistic system. And another thing to note about that, there's a great review by Glaser um, in the early 90s where he compared a lot of tasks on we're presenting words versus pictures. And what he showed was that the pictures actually access the conceptual system faster than words and produce much stronger conceptual effects of priming and interference. So basically, in his argument, this is kind of where we got the idea for our theory, is that when you get a word, you immediately go into the linguistic form system and you can bypass the rest of the conceptual system if all you need is coming from that, from the linguistic form system. But you know, if you if that's not going to give you the information you need, then you need to go into the conceptual system. Things take a little bit longer. So, um, so yeah, that's I guess. Did I did I answer your question? I rambled a lot there. It's just that we shouldn't be too uh, concrete in assuming that these time courses here really are say anything at all about what happens in real life online process. I, I think it's really important to distinguish what's happening at the activation level and what's happening at the readout executive right. level. And I think you know. Really, the right way to probably answer these questions is, is with things like EEG and MEG. And I would, I've, I would actually love to do these experiments um, with that kind of um, method to kind of to really get at yeah. this question. I, I could, yeah, because I don't think any of these experiments do really. Yes.
So um, <laughs> I guess I'm still having a little trouble with the, the um, dichotomization of the linguistic system versus the simulation system. And now I, I should say in introduction that I'm a novice to situated cognition period, so this might reflect my ignorance. But, but given that these simulations can be partial, uh, uh, smaller or fuller, I mean, don't we have tons and tons of situations where we hear words? Right. And where words can't, couldn't you account for the lightweight, what you're calling the linguistic system, as language experience simulations that evoke just enough information to recognize that these things go together, and the task demand didn't need a more extensive simulation, and if you need a more extensive simulation to do the task, so couldn't these be a range of fast and slow simulations, and you use the most, the, the lightest weight one that will do the job? Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's a real possibility, and I think that probably happens to some extent, but I, I still think that, you know, kind of the linguistic system gets, um, active sometimes and, and carries off the task with relatively little use from the simulation system. And I didn't go into these results in detail because they're kind of complicated regression results. But what we actually did in this experiment was we had a zillion predict... So this, is the, this was this experiment um, where, we do, where we're doing property verification, like does a house have a roof? And we have the same true trials in both conditions, but we manipulate the relatedness of the false trial. So the, and the argument is, which, which, you're, which you're raising again, is that w what we proposed originally was that they use this system when they have these unrelated false trials, and they use this system when that's blocked. And so what we actually found, so in these regressions, we had all kinds of things that were predicting the reaction times and error rates. And those predictors inclu included like the size of the properties, it included, uh, it's been so long, I can't remember. What, but the, criti the other critical one was we had all kinds of kind of linguistic measures like the familiarity of the words. And the critical one was the, with the word association strength from one word to the other. And basically, in, in, when the false trials were unrelated, by far the overwhelming best predictor was this, the associative strength of the two words. Right, but I guess I'm just wondering, isn't in what way is the associative strength of two words not like the fact that you that a hammer's visual properties and a hammer's motor properties occur together extremely yeah. and yeah. become linked in the nervous system? Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, and you could argue that these, associ these association predictors are picking up the associative information in the simulation as well as in the words. Um, I mean, it just seems like there's almost a priori yeah. counting language experience as as a situated event that is retrieved. Yeah. And therefore it gets called a different system, but we've had we've heard billions of words yeah. and associations and those are experiences yeah. in our lives. Yeah. Doesn't they have more evidence for experiments? Yeah, that's what I that's what I was thinking. that would be that you just have the same visual cortex activation but less of it. Right? Yeah. For example. No, it would be that you know. don't you don't need to you don't need to activate a, a representation that includes a vision because the associative strength is enough to do the job. Yeah, that, I mean that, that would be what we'd argue is it's just the associative strength of the, of the two words, but. Um, right, I, I, I would just say, could I, yep. in what way could that not be a more partial simulation that's faster and takes less brain? Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, as you were just pointing out, I mean, I think the imaging evidence might be helpful. And, and I should say we need a lot more evidence to really get at this. But, I mean, like, so in this condition right here, this, you know, where um, we have the unrelated false trials, there's no activation in this fusiform area at all. Whereas if there were partial, you know, maybe you'd see enough, maybe you'd see activation. Maybe we don't have enough power here. Um, but we, we did. Yes. 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 Yes.